So I've got a few projects lined up here for my truck that I want to go ahead and get going. Um, but in order to do a few of those, I needed to upgrade a couple of things. So I wanted to get a trailer hitch so that way I can be able to pull the trailer with my truck. And I need to upgrade the leaf springs at least a little bit so that way it can support a little more weight. Um, didn't want to put any stress on the current bumper, or not the bumper, but on the current trailer uh, ball that I have on there. Um, I wanted to get something a little more rigid, more supportive. So I ended up investing in a trailer hitch. Now, not your traditional trailer hitch, mind you. I went a little bit more exotic and got more of a trailer hitch bumper guard. Let me show you here real quick. So I said that it was coming in two parts. I wasn't expecting quite this. This thing is huge. Granted, it is upside down. But I'm going to be mounting this to the back of my truck, hopefully to be able to save some weight, but to help protect it. One of the main reasons why I wanted to protect it is because I went to work one day, left my truck out on the street because the company that I worked with at the time didn't have any kind of parking lot for us to park in. And a semi truck clipped the back of my truck and totally damaged the driver rear fender. And I had to go through insurance, claimed as hit and run. The company didn't own up to any of the damages, even though I had the proof that I needed and my insurance company kind of fell through with that. So they just like, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and kind of help you out here or whatever. But anyways, long story short, that ain't going to happen again because I got this now. So we'll go ahead and get this installed and then I'll show you exactly how to go through each one of those steps and show you what it looks like here at the end. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and remove the spare tire from underneath. So if you've watched any of the videos that I've showed before, um, there's going to be a special little key that you'll need to, to go ahead and detach it. You only insert it right into that little spot right there. And I'll show you. But it'll go right inside of there, and then you just go ahead and rotate that until the tire comes down. So before you get this bumper taken off, you're going to want to go ahead and remove these little uh, license plate lights. All you have to do is just twist and remove. So when you're putting up the new bumper, you can go ahead and put the bolt in there just so it's kind of uh, keeping its place in there as, as a placeholder so it doesn't fall out. You can go ahead and just tighten down that bolt so it doesn't slip out for any reason. Just do that for both sides. That way, when you're putting in this bolt over here, um, it's just kind of already in place. We, did use, we are using a rubber mallet to help us kind of fit it in place. Otherwise, if you use a hammer, you might end up damaging the, the finished product. Whack it with a mallet to get it in place. Going. It's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> All right, it's made contact. All right, so the kit does come with a license plate uh, setup. Um, so you've got this little LED light, and then it's got these two little spring mounts that you can go ahead and wrap around the bottom of your bumper. But you are going to have to go ahead and get these spliced in. So if you have like a soldering kit, that would be awesome. Otherwise, you should be able to get away without having to use it. All right. So you can put the straps right through there. There's two little holes. You can kind of see that over there. Mount the plate right here. It just loops in through the back. Now, the two holes right here are going to be the ones that are going to be holding up that LED. And this is where you can pass the, the wire through. So here we have a male and a female quick disconnect. We've gone ahead and cut off the original lamp that was sitting on there. So that way we can go ahead and strip this back just a little far enough that we can go ahead and solder on the new pieces. So we'll go ahead and strip this back just far enough, probably about a quarter of an inch. And then we'll go ahead and put that on there and crimp it so that way we can remove that at any time. All right, so 
Right now, this is this because this is stranded wire. You're going to want to go ahead and buy by what it says stranded. Um, this is about 20 gauge. I went ahead and bit it down, but from my experience, because it is such a tight fit, and you try to pull it out and strip it on that same size, it doesn't come off as easily. So once you bite it here on the correct size, you go to the next size up, and then you're able to bite down, and it strips off that much easier. Fold this over just because these are probably a little bit too big for it, but this should give us enough uh, enough size that it should be able to go in there and strip down this one. So for this particular part, we're having to go ahead and put the wires through. So that way, anytime that we do have to remove the plate for any reason, um, this whole thing is just going to have to come off as a unit just because of these quick disconnects. But we'll go ahead and just remove that anytime that we need. Otherwise, these will not fit through here with this rubber grommet in place. So if you do solder it, just keep that in mind that it may be joined for life on there. So the color coding for this black goes to the green and this white will go to the white if you try to mix in between nothing will happen but this is the color coding that we found that works out for this i like to use electrical tape here on my on my connectors even though they are quick disconnects um tape just kind of helps keep it together and, and if any water does get on it it's going to be less likely that it'll get inside but as i mentioned the tape itself is just kind of there to keep these from sliding in and out while you're driving down the road Yeah. Woo! These particular bolts are going to take an 11 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and tighten that down. Um, we were trying to use both metric and SAE hex bolts. Um, the SAE seemed like it was coming the closest. We were trying about 2.5, um, but it wasn't quite the right size. So somewhere around 2.5 is what you're going to need to go ahead and get those those things mounted in there. This makes it so much easier to lift this thing up and down. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. So if you do have any kind of questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, like and subscribe.